Hello everyone and welcome to the SBK Betting Podcast, the Grand National Preview of 2024. We're recording Tuesday before Saturday's main event and we will bring you something a bit different this year in terms of brief previewing. Of course, always in the company of Tom Collins and Ross Miller. And before we get into it, SBK have a special offer. Uh, They are double winnings on any runner in the Grand National. That means you can get double the odds on any runner in this year's Grand National with SBK, a max bet stake of £5. T's and C's apply. As ever, all new SBK users get £30 in free bets when you sign up and bet £10 for the first time. And we have lots of other offers and promotions. But that Grand National double winnings on any runner is there to savour. And with that in mind, we are going to take you through each of the contenders and give you our reasoning why they can or cannot win this year's Grand National. Yes, we are endeavouring to give you as comprehensive as possible run through of this year's National without boring you, of course, keep it entertaining. So we are making certain that we don't miss out on any of them. Excited? Ross, TC, quick nod, quick shake. Yeah, Ross, they are apprehensive. <laughs> yeah I, I, I would just like to see sensible heads prevail and there's a few horses that we all agree are are still in at this stage that on this ground they've got no chance really of of showing up and uh, given the the big emphasis in the horsepower launch from BHA I just hope that sensible heads prevail and horses that have got no chance get taken out and looked after for another day disappointing though of course it's going to be for connections yeah it is currently soft heavy in places on the Grand National course and with the rain that's coming down all over the country, Salika Varma didn't look that confident that the heavy was going to be removed by Saturday. 4pm, new start time, there's been a lot of changes, safety measures, that's why that they've introduced to make this Grand National the most safe the most safe for a long time. We now, instead of 40, have 34 runners that we're going to post on Saturday, but we're going to go through the more likely contenders, we've got a few left over as well because we're not uncertain who's definitely going to get in. And we're going to go from top weight down. So Conflated will start. We're going to take it in turns and hopefully we'll give you something to think about and we'll have our one, two, three, four for the national as well. So without further ado, Ross will take it away with our top weight Conflated. Yes, yeah, so Conflated off a mark of 166, top weight of 11 stone 12. Um, he was instantly entered in the bet or declared in the Betfair Bowl about Five past nine, uh, five past nine this morning. Taken out before nine thirty. Um, I just, I don't think he's got the stamina for this trip, and I'm, I'm not sure connections believe he has either because he didn't run in the Gold Cup this year. He ran in the Ryanair Chase because he looked like an on-stayer last year. Um, interesting as well. He's unseated or fallen in six of his thirty-two starts. Um, it's not a great stat to have, you know, going into the national. I think he's one you can simply say has just got absolutely no chance. Horse number two on the race card is Noble Yates. He's set to carry 11 stone, 11 pounds, thanks to his official rating of 165. The same weight he lumped around last year when finishing fourth behind Corrup Brambler. He's only run over hurdles this season, but he's competed at the highest level. He's been targeted at this race. We know that. We know he stays. We know he loves the course. He's definitely a player, but there might be one or two that are better handicapped than him this time around. Number three is Nassalam for Gary Moore. Uh, his first national runner, unbelievably. Off mark of 161, equates to 11 stone, seven. Of course, that will rise by a pound if completed isn't declared. Um, it's a high mark. He's 11 pound higher than when he won the Welsh national, but he is only going to carry effectively four pound more in weight. And he absolutely romped home in the Welsh national. He is one horse that the more it rains, the closer to getting called off it is, the better this horse's chance. He jumped around in the session at the start of the year, seemed to cope with the fences well enough. And I like the fact that that two and a half mile trip means he should cope with the sort of early scrimmaging of the national. Gold Cup run was a bit disappointing, but I think connections have been quite clear that that was very much to sharpen him up, having not run since the Welsh national. Um, So he didn't have a hard race. I think he's got a really big chance. The second of Gordon Elliott's battalion is horse number four, Coco Beach. This nine-year-old won the Thiestes back in 2021 and the Troy Town in 2023. So staying handicap chases are his bag. This race hasn't been good to him in the past, though. He was eighth two years ago. Last term he pulled up. He'll be part of the pace, but he probably won't be at the front towards the end. 
Horse number five is Capadano, and this is the first of nine we're going to go through for Ireland's champion trainer, Willie Mullins. And what I could hear from a quite a poor line to Willie Mullins on Racing TV yesterday, he said to me this would be Keith Donoghue's ride. We'll have to see when it gets to declarations if that does come true. But this is a difficult horse to get a handle on. Yes, he won the Cotswold Chase beating the real Wacker, but he pulled up in this race last year. He never really got into it at all. He's won over three miles, but I don't think he truly stays this trip and he's on a very high mark compared to last year considering what he's achieved and I'm against him. Willie Mullins' best chance in the race could be Iron Maximus according to the market. He's five pound well in off his grand national weight uh, with a rating of 159, currently actually rated 164 and he smashed Vanillier in the Bobby Joe chase when last seen so he'll definitely be popular. However, He's not a natural jumper, in my opinion. He can also be very slow into his fences. And if you do that in the Grand National, despite the obstacles not being as big as they were, it can put you on the back foot. He also has a tendency to plough through one or two. So I'm a bit dubious about Iron Maximus' jumping. He can also race lazily, which is a big concern. They go hard up front. And if you get too far back in the field, it's hard to play a part. This is his first try on the national course. As I say, he's got a chance on figures. I don't like him, though. Do you, Jess? I think he's been a real revelation this term. He's really on the up and we aren't sure the limits of his ability. Yes, there's slight concerns about his jumping and going in this way round, but he won the Irish National last year and his 14 length demolition in the Bobby Joe chase over last year's second in the Grand National, Vanilla, has to be considered a really strong piece of form. Will he adapt to this track and the fences? I'm not sure, but I would like to see Jody McGarvey foot as he's been instrumental to the success of this horse, giving him the confidence and making certain he does do his best over his fences. So that's going to be the real saver for me with Iron Maximus, but I can't be against him. So Iron Maximus, you both think is improving. One who's almost certainly not improving at his age is Manella Indo, off a mark of 159, 11 stone, five. He was actually my first Grand National tip back in January for a, for a New Year's piece. Um, I thought he was far too big when he was 50 to 1 at, at, at that time. Um, the ground maybe now is not ideal. He has won on heavy ground. He, he beat uh, Statler in the Savills chase in 2023 on, on very soft ground at Thurles. Um, but his very best high class form, I think we can all agree, has come on a sounder surface when winning the Gold Cup, when runner-up in the Gold Cup. It was both good to soft on that occasion. Looked to have lost his way a little bit, but like many horses, cross-country racing seemed to sort of rejuvenate a bit last time. He travelled with far more zest, stayed very well behind late night, night pass. He's now £10 better off uh, with that horse for a six-length beating. He's got a bit of a class angle. I think he could just enjoy this. I am a bit worried about the ground, though. Corrick Rambler is last year's facile winner who's been trained for a backup success. He's long been anti post favourite for the race. He found it all so easy in this last year. He was £10 well in, though, off the back of his ultimate victory at Cheltenham. His latest run, he was third in the Gold Cup, which was really pleasing, but it was on soft ground. So I wonder if it's taken a good bit out of him. And this year he faces much tougher conditions than he did when he won it and did it in clearly the conditions he really favours. Lucinda Russell has said slightly better ground would have been preferred. So how will he get on? He has got all the class. We know how much he seems to grow and thrive when, when he's over these national fences. It will be hard work for him, but you can't not be with Corrick Brambler. He was so good in it last year. He'll definitely be up there pitching. The next two horses are both trained by Willie Mullins. We'll start with horse number nine. That is Jana Dill. He'll be a big outsider in this race. Three figures. At this stage, he was beaten out of sight in the Slayer's Hurdle at Cheltenham when last seen. Yeah, he's not a hurdler, but still, you'd have liked to have seen a bit of a better preparation than this. He's just three for the 16 over fences. He's not the best of jumpers, and stamina is also a concern. And that takes you on to horse number 10, who's got kind of a contrasting profile. That is Statler. Now, there's some debate whether or not he's going to run in this race. Willie Mullins gave a positive report. Ronnie Bartlett didn't. He would have an outside chance if he does run. He should stay well. He would love the soft ground. Don't count him out, though there probably are one or two with more pressing profile claims. Horse number 11, Marla Mission, and he looks to be the first runner in the race for John McConnell, who has had quite a quiet season by his standards. This horse hasn't run since running second in the old Hennessy. Could have gone one better if it wasn't for losing two front shoes, and that's what John McConnell did say might have just really dented him at, at the tail end of that race. 
the amateur Ben Harvey is back on board. They've said that this jockey gets on so well with him. He got got to give him the opportunity. It'll be his first ride in the race as well. He's a horse that has plenty of class. He was all but going to win at Cheltenham last year, but for falling uh, when it was two from home. Uh, he's a horse that probably we don't know how good he is yet. He's been kept under wraps by John McConnell. Will he handle the ground? It's another question mark, but I have long been waiting for this horse in this national. This has been the plan. He's had one race course gallop, I've heard, and I'm really excited by his chances here, and I think he'll 100% stay. Delta Work certainly stays this trip, was third in 2022 off a mark of 160, which was equated to 11 stone nine. Now off 157, 11 stone three. I think he looks well handicapped, and I think unlike previous years, this race has been the target all year. Uh, it's £21 better off with Noble Yates, who won it in 2022. Yet it's bigger in the market, and I'm not sure that should be the case. I think it's got a great chance of making the frame or even going a little bit better. Foxy Jacks for Mouse Morris won the cross country at Cheltenham, beating a fancied horse for this race, Late Night Pass, who's a much shorter price. Foxy Jacks won that race despite not being brilliant over the fences. I was actually quite shocked by how well he jumped. I can't see him jumping well enough here. I don't think he's got much of a chance at all, I'm afraid. Horse number 14 is Galvin. Now, owner Ronnie Bartlett has also said this horse may not run due to the ground, but we'll see. He unseated Davy Russell at the first fence in this race last year and hasn't had a great season this term. Uh, you know, he's had a couple of spins over hurdles. He was being aimed at the Cheltenham Cross Country Chase, which ended up not being run. He's a capable horse. He should stay. He should love the conditions. The question is, is he still capable? Farouk de Hélène gets a mark of 154, which to 11 stone. I think he looks handicapped to his best on a mark of 154. He will like the ground. He did beat Vanillier over hurdles, but I'm not sure his stamina is assured for this test. And I think he's got little chance, really. El Dorado Allen for the Tizards and... Afraid to say, sorry, no chance in my mind. He's been up there in some big races this term, including fourth in the, in the old Hennessy, but I just don't think he's good enough and he's getting on now. Ain't that a shame gets a mark of 152 and will be David Maxwell's first ride in the race. He is a rider that, of course, divides opinion. I like him. I think he knows his limitations. He's riding in a much better balance these days. He doesn't do anything too erratic. But Ain't That Shame isn't all that easy a ride. It's going to pull quite hard in the early stages. That will test David Maxwell's improvement. Back in, the, back in the day, he pulled up a couple of horses that pulled too strong for him. This will show his progression. I like the fact he's in there. I hope he has a safe passage round, but I think it's fanciful to think that he's got any chance of winning it. Next, we have Vanillier, one of the market leaders, and my strongest fancy for the race. He jumped onto the scene with a victory in the 2021 Albert Bartlett at the Cheltenham Festival. He's just a big, powerful, strong horse. He subsequently run very well in numerous graded contests without really stringing together victories. I think he's got the perfect chance to win this race. He's had one spin in this event before. He finished second last year behind Corrett Brambler. He was just too far back, but he finished off the race so powerfully, he had to go into everyone's tracker. This time around, hopefully we see Vanillier be ridden a little bit more aggressive and therefore he should have a great chance. By a weird quirk of fate, one that I really like comes next in Mr. Incredible. And I know TC is not keen on him at all. I have to say, unlike TC, I'm not keen on Vanillier. Um, yes, he was too far back last time, but I think that was because he was given a very conservative ride because of his jumping. And if you watch it back, made a number of jumping errors. I then watched some footage of him loose jumping the other day, and I didn't really like what I saw. He struggles to get his hocks underneath him as a horse and sort of slightly reaches for the fence. That's not for me. And despite having experience of the course and jumping around last year, I'm not convinced that uh, it's the test for him. Mr. Incredible, on the other hand, he was running really well when his saddle slipped and he unseated at the canal turn last time. Um, he's a quirky horse, but he seemed to be really enjoying this sort of test. It is, of course, no given that that would happen same time around. But on his first start since then, after 336 days off, he ran a very big race in the Midlands National under top weight, staying on very dowdy to the line. He looks like a dow stayer. He will like this ground. 28-day turnaround from that first start after 300-plus days off is a minor concern. But if he gets into a nice rhythm with Brian Hayes, who clearly knows him well, I think he's got a great chance. Horse number 20 is Run Wild Fred, another of Gordon Elliott's runners and Jiggenstown as well. There are more letters next to this horse's name than numbers over the last nine starts. Consistency quite clearly isn't his forte and neither is accurate jumping. It is worth mentioning though that he was only 8-1 to one for this race back in 2022. Much bigger price this year after a poor run in the Ultima. Look, he's got a limited chance of winning. 
Late Night Pass will be Tom Ellis's first runner under rules. He lines up here for mark of 149, 10 stone, 9. Be ridden by his wife, Gina Andrews. Uh, this horse has got good course form over these national fences. He won the Fox Hunters two years ago. He was fourth last year. He appeared to stay very well when winning the handicap uh, chase, cross-country chase at the Cheltenham uh, meeting back in December. But I'm not convinced that his stamina is going to last out for this full trip. And I'm just not sure he's perhaps got the class to be winning the Grand National. But he's certainly likely to give you a run for your money. Manella Kruna is one of the horses that shouldn't really be in this race, but gets in because of his inflated mark based on his on his earlier days. And he's not really shown his early day forms. He, he did beat Iron Maximus in a beginner's chase back in the day. I think that was in 2022. But I don't think he's got any strong enough recent form to suggest he's good enough or he can even stay. Adamantly chosen, stamina is perhaps a question with him as well. He's off a mark of 148, 10 stone, 8 he'll carry. He's £2 well in. Um, he's raised £3 for hammering Roy Marge at Down Royal on soft ground, over 3 mile 2 on his last start. He's definitely best on slow ground. He was just five lengths behind Jerry Colomb in the four he novices chase last year, staying on over that trip of 2 mile 4. The stamina is going to be a question mark, but I think he stayed very powerfully at Down Royal last time. Around about 66 to 1, he's probably a, a, an interesting outsider um, and uh, could well outrun his odds. Mac Totti is a horse with plenty of course form. He's won the Sefton and the Topham around these fences. He also won a veterans chase at Liverpool back in December. Two runs since then have been very below par, but the Bowen Yard has been quiet. Again, stamina, a bit of a question mark. He's won twice over three miles, but never run over further than that. And both those wins came on good ground, although he has won on softer ground over shorter. I think the percentage play is to say that he'll run well without fully staying this trip. But uh, I just have an inkling that he might just find the stamina um, and he'll certainly cope with the fences. So another one that could out well outrun his odds. Horse number 25 in the entries on Tuesday is Chemical Energy, yet another runner in the race for Gordon Elliott. Now this gelding is lightly raced, which fits the recent trend of Grand National winners. Soft ground is his want as well. However, he weakened late um, on his only try over a long distance in the National Hunt Chase last year. He's only been seen once this term. There are too many question marks to support him this time around. Limerick Lace, uh, bidding to do it for the girls. She was a fantastic winner of the Mayor's Chase at Cheltenham uh, four weeks ago. She's been really well placed by Gavin Cromwell in Mayor's events this season, but this is a different kettle of fish. A big ask, a step up in trip. She is well in at the weights. She's a strong traveller. She jumps well on the more ordinary customary fences. She isn't proven at the trip, but she's a full sister to I Know The Way You're Thinking, who is the winner of the three mile two fell on Kim Year at the Cheltenham Festival this year. She is open to further improvement. She's just a seven year old. Ground is a question mark, but I think she's quite interesting at an each way price. On to one of the market leaders now in Meeting of the Waters, who I've really liked in the Ultima at the Cheltenham Festival this year, where he finished third. That was just his sixth run over fences, which means he now qualifies to run in the Grand National. You have to have a minimum of six runs uh, in chases to run here. So maybe this was part of the plan. He's not a very big horse, but that's not as much of a concern nowadays as it was maybe 10, 20 years ago. My biggest concern with him, though, is that he's still very raw and he can get close to a fence or two. Maybe he'll make a couple too many errors. The Goffer is uh, the next for Gordon Elliott, and he's a big prize. He hasn't won a race this season, bar a charity race, and he was a well-beaten favourite in the Ultima. The heavy ground that day was blamed for that run, so I can't see the conditions being in his favour uh, with what we're expecting to get. One horse who will like conditions is Roy Marge, but he's now a 12-year-old. He's got a mark of 147, carries 10 stone 7. He ran well last year when finishing 7th, but it's very hard to fathom that uh, at progressing years of age, He's going to better that effort this time round. Horse number 30 is Glenn Gooley, who's never run beyond three mile one furlongs, but will love the testing ground if it stays as it is currently with the rain coming down. He finished a good second uh, in the Thiessies back in January, but the rest of his form just wouldn't scream a future Grand National winner. Horse that I must be missing something on is Galia de Lato. I've heard plenty of chat for her off a mark of 146, carrying just 10 stone six, but I just don't see it. She's twice been beaten at odds on this year. Her, her only win came when short-priced favourite for a mare's listed chase. And she did run well in the classic chase at Warwick on heavy ground, but I think on the balance of all known form, it's hard to see her playing a hand here. 
Martin Brazil won the Grand National back in 2006 with number six Valverde. And he must have a huge chance of repeating the feat this time around with Panda Boy, who is guaranteed a run now as number 32 uh, in the list. If you ask me which horse in this race, Bar Coric Rambler had the most suitable profile, I would say Panda Boy. Big field handicaps are his bag. Stamina is not a concern and he's open to improvement of his current mark. However, the ground is a worry. Martin's always said that good ground or good to soft ground is what he wants. If it's soft or even heavy, Panda Boy may struggle. Eclat de Rear has some really good back class chase form. Lines up here off a mark of 146, 10 stone 6. You could argue he's well uh, handicapped on that form. His Punchestown form, Navin form, and particularly at Wexford when beating Conflated, reads like good form. But uh, he's been off since pulling up in the 2021 Hennessy Gold Cup. His form has been regressive since then. Ran poorly at Cheltenham last time and he's impossible to fancy here. The 12-year-old Chambard is next for the Venetia Williams team. And no doubt Lucy Turner will be back on board. Knows this horse like the back of her hand. Won over the National Fences when winning the Beaches in December. That was on heavy ground. So the conditions are in his favour. But I think... Ages against him, really. If it was a couple of years ago, I'd quietly quite fancy him. But his form has tailed off a little bit since winning that Beecher. He doesn't seem like a horse in the best vein of form. And I just worry that he wouldn't be as fresh as I'd want him to be after running down the field last time out in the Ultima. Kitty's Light lines up here, hopefully off a mark of 146, 10 stone six. I hope he gets a run. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, having been with him for pretty much every single one of his marathon trip wins. But I'm just a little bit against him here on this ground. I don't think the ground in itself is an issue. I think he'll cope with travelling in the ground, but he's not the scopiest of jumpers. And I think sinking a little bit into the ground is going to make these fences just that little bit bigger. And that's going to cause him a problem. Much was made of his jumping when he won the Ida chase at Newcastle last year. I didn't think his jumping was all that bad on occasion, but his worst jumps came at the softest part of the track at Newcastle. Um, so that's the concern for me. Let's hope he gets a run. And if he doesn't, let's hope it triggers someone looking at why we don't have winning your in races. This is a horse that won the Ida, the Scottish National and the Bet365 uh, chase at Sandown last year and might not run in the premier staying handicap chase in the British calendar. It just seems bang wrong to me. And I hope upon hope that Christian Williams gets a run for his really smart staying chaser. The next three horses are all right now below the cut line, but there is a chance that they can run in the race, so we're going to cover them as well. Um, the first of them is Melina Girl. Now, only one seven-year-old has won this race since 1940. That was Noble Yates a couple of years ago. Melina Girl will look to defy that trend for Gavin Cromwell if she gets a run, but the trip is a big worry for me. I don't think she's going to stay. Next horse is Desert Moore House. Unfortunately, it looks like he may not get a run, but he would be a, a player if he does for Martin Brazil. He would be the second runner in the race for that trainer. Right now, he's got a good chance, as good a chance as any. You know, he won the Kerry National last year. That is a brilliant prep for this race. He should stay. Loves big field handicap chases. And he's been shrewdly campaigned this season as well. So don't write him off. The issue with this is that it just looks unlikely. If we have 40 runners, he would be in my top four, I tell you that right now. The same could be said regarding Kinondo Cueto. Maybe he doesn't have the same form claims, but at least he's been winning recently. This is a much tougher event in terms of quality of horse that he's going to be facing. It would be great if he was running in this race for the Englands because they don't have too many runners on the biggest of stages. But right now, he's below the cut mark and there are a few ahead of him that should be getting in. He probably won't be. Another that probably won't get in is Shake Him Up Harry off a mark of 143. Uh, and uh, even if he does, I think stamina here is potentially a bit of an issue for him. But he is a very sound jumper, should cope with the ground. So if not running here, he'd like to run in the top him, and he'd certainly have a chance in that instead. So that was a rattle through the main contenders of this year's Grand National. And from what I could gather, I think there are more horses TC and Ross are siding against than with. So I think this next question should be quite straightforward then, as it normally always is for the Grand National. Top four, and we need a first, second and third and fourth, not just will be in there at some point in some way. We need you to put your neck on the line and I'm going to go with Ross first, our resident jumping man, and take us through your first four in this year's Grand National. OK, so first four with a little bit of how it will play out as well. Mr. Incredible probably gets to the elbow, has a good look around because he is a bit quirky and Nassalam will just come and uh, 
out to stay him. So Nassalam first, Mr. Incredible second. Marla Mission, I think, is, is booked for a really solid run in third and Delta Work in fourth. Okay, and TC, have you got a, it envisaged in your mind exactly how this will play out in the same vein as Ross? And what's your one, two, three, four? Not as much confidence in the setup, that's for sure. Uh, but you I don't sleep and dream about this. <laughs> No, I don't. I know Ross does. I certainly don't. Uh, I'm going to be betting the horses that I'm going to pass in my first and second places. They are Vanillier. I think he's the most logical winner after finishing second in the race last year. He'll stay the trip. Hopefully he jumps a little bit better and is closer to the speed. Panda Boy is my second selection. I have to bet him even though I don't think the ground is ideal. He's just got the perfect profile and he really caught my eye last time up. Third place, I'll say Cork Rambler. I won't have money on him, but I just think he's a solid horse. We know last year he won in such easy fashion. He's been tuned up for this race, so he has to be there or thereabouts. And much like Ross, Marlon Mission is my fourth selection because he's just primed to run a good race. I think he may come up a little short, hence why he's fourth and not first, but he's got to be in the top four or five anyway. Okay, and a horse that we all kind of agree is going to be there somewhere, somewhere about, whether it's first, second, third or fourth. For me, the winner is Marla Mission, a horse that's been prepped for this, who's got a lot of class, a huge amount of potential. And bar that sh shuddering fall last year at Cheltenham, I think he's pretty much perfect when it comes to jumping. And he's actually been, he, he has improved at it as well. The testing ground, like for a lot of them, it will be the concern, but I think he stays and I don't think we know the limit of his abilities, which can be said for the second place also I'm going to put in Iron Maximus. There is concerns that he might not be at his best around this track and we're not too certain about how he'll jump, but he de you definitely can't not have him in there and if any horse uh, will, will is going into this with, with the most amount of uh, experience in terms of what they've done and and, and knowing how, how well they enjoy it it's Corrick Rambler who is in third for me he's got a lot more weight than he did last year but you've got to love this horse he loves it he seems to grow a, an inch going over to to entry and, and in this kind of setup so third place for Carrick Rambler and at a bigger price and I think it was a, a nice enough word for him from Ross on Manila Indo uh, a former Gold Cup winner. He's been revitalised by the cross-country discipline. And I think it was probably a good thing that that race was cancelled at Cheltenham this year as he will be massively fresh for a race like this. And I can see him filling up the placings in fourth. So that's it. We've got a few that cross over. Um, so what it's worth anyway, um, although there's plenty in here, I think we could agree a lot of them that don't really have a reason to be in here. But only for a, a good fun day out for their owners. And that's that's fine. That's acceptable. But there's more that uh, don't have a chance than do have a chance in our minds. Let's see how this plays out. But the Grand National is always a special race. It is the race that we will all be watching and we'll all be punting in. And that's why we have this special offer for you. Uh, double winnings on any runner in the Grand National. So whatever you like that we have selected, or maybe you completely disagree with us, you can get double the odds on any runner in this year's Grand National, thanks to SBK. You have a max stake of five pounds. There will be T's and C's apply. We also have the usual. Uh, you can get 30 pounds of free bets when you sign up for the first time, bet 10 pounds. For the first time, head to SBK for lots of other offers, promotions throughout the weekend. We do also have daily podcasts uh, for uh, the Aintree Festival. It's not just about the Grand National. There's lots of other good supporting races. So I'll leave that in the safe hands of, of Ross and TC. Enjoy the National. I hope we found something for you there. And uh, we'll see you soon.